give him a shout. You in the right place tonight. Come on, come on, give him a shout. You in the right place. There's a word from the Lord for you tonight. Oh, come on, somebody. I dare you to look at your neighbor and tell him you in the right place tonight because the Lord has a word just for you. It's just for you. You had to be here tonight. You had to be here tonight. You had to be here tonight. Oh, bless the Lord. That's it. Come on. Come on. Bless it. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. He's here tonight. I'm telling you tonight, you can take your seat. I, I am so honored to be here. I give honor to Bishop Leonard and First Lady Michelle for the invitation. I am so honored. And I also give honor to Pastor Lawrence and to uh, Lady Charmaine Connolly for their hospitality today. And truly, tonight, I am in a place that I have never been before. But I must say that the moment that I made it in this city, I felt the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you to the point so I have never had a prophetic message as I have tonight for it. not only a city but the Lord said to me that I want to give you this word for the body of Christ and just before we go to the word tonight I want you to let you know that I did bring some product with me I won't take too much time to um, go into all of the product that I have but I did bring tonight a copy of my not just a copy but I brought some books tonight for your, your pleasure. And the title of the book is After All I've Been Through, I'm Still Here. I'm still here. See, when the devil tried to kill me, is there anybody in here that nobody really expect you to make it through? Oh, I wish I had just somebody right there that, that, that nobody expected you to survive what you went through. But you defied the odds and came out not with your head down, but you came out with your hands up saying, look what the Lord, Lord, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. You made up in your mind. I will not die in this. Oh, my God. I don't have time tonight to tell you my testimony. But by man's standard, I should not even be here. Oh, and I shock the devil every time I show up. Come on, somebody. Every time I lift my hands and give God praise, I make the devil out of a liar. So tonight we have some of those also. The Lord, even in my, in my time of going through, little did I know that God would give me some songs to write that would be a blessing to the body of Christ. One of those songs is titled, I Speak Life in You. And I'm telling you, this song, it amazed me how I get letters from around the country and how this song, and there's about 10 songs on there. I also brought some preaching tapes and, and CDs and ministry for you and some videotapes. And they will be in the, I believe, in the foyer after service. Tonight, if you have your Bible, let's go to the word of the Lord tonight. The Lord began to speak to me when I got the invitation to come. And I asked the Lord, I said, what do you want me to minister when I get there? And the Lord began to say to me, he took me to Isaiah, the 40th chapter and the 31st verse. When you have it, say amen. amen. And I will read as you find it. It says, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I believe I have somebody in here tonight that believe God. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When the Lord gave me that, he began to say to me, he said, I'm giving you a word that I want you to talk to the eagles. Did you hear me tonight? He gave me a word and he said, I want you to give this word or this message to the eagles. And I said, okay, God, how am I going to know who the eagles are? He said, the moment you begin to give the word, all the eagles will respond. Are you hearing me tonight? He said, because when you know that you are an eagle, you don't need a cheerleader to pump you up really to worship God. When you know that you're an eagle, there is something on the inside of you that automatically gives you strength. And so here when the Lord gave me this, he said, I want you to give this word. 
And as I began to research this, because I've heard this scripture, this is a very, very familiar passage of scripture, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Very familiar passage of scripture. But one thing that I understood when I read that, the Lord said to me, except you understand the character and the nature of eagles, you will miss this scripture in its entirety. And he said to me, he began to break this down to me, but they that wait on the Lord. And he said to me, there are many people in the body of Christ that have been waiting on God to move in their lives. And so I, I looked up the word wait, and the word wait means to set yourself to expect God to move. Another definition for the word wait, it says to remain in readiness for some action. In other words, what that means is while I'm believing on God for an answer, I am prepared for the answer to come. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, but I'm believing that what I'm asking God to do, he is going to do it for me because I expect him to do it for me. I know that he's going to come through for me in this situation because I have seen him work in other situations. And so the Lord began to say to me, he said that there are some people that have been waiting on me to move, but for whatever reason it looks like I have not answered them it looks like I have forgotten them and I begin to hear first lady talking about being in an impossible situation well I want to serve notice on you tonight that it, there is something going on in the spirit of every ego right now in the body of Christ there is something there's a stirring going on in your spirit that, that, that you feel like it's God God is about to move in your life like never before you know that if you've ever been on the brink of a breakthrough you know that it's right there. You may not see it. You may not be able to put your hands on it. You may not be able to stand on it. But you know down in your spirit it's going to happen. It's got to happen for me. And it's something going on down in your spirit. And the Lord began to say to me, that one of the things that he is doing right now, and God began to speak to me, and he said to me, but when this particular scripture was placed in the book, and it says, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. And when the Lord began to talk to me, I began to do, because he said, you can't talk about the eagles if you don't know about the eagles. I know what I've heard about eagles. So the Lord began to, and I began to do research, and I began to look, and I began to gather up all of this information. Little did I know how prophetic the time and the move of God would be. As the Lord began to talk to me, he said, I want you to tell the eagles, and this is my little topic for tonight in my time. He says, tell every eagle that's under the sound of your voice, it's time to soar again. Did you hear me tonight? He said, tell them it's time to soar again. In other words, if he added the word again in there, it must, it tells me that there's a moment in time that you used to soar, but you ran up against something that took the energy out of you. It took some joy from you. It robbed you of some peace. Come on in here, somebody. But the Lord said, prophesy to every eagle in the building that is your time now to get up from where you are, and it's time to mount up with wings that God has created you to soar in. And so the Lord began to say to me, I looked up the definition of the word soar, because we know that the word soar means to glide high, to glide high in the sky. But there's another definition to the word soar. That definition simply means to rise in thought, to rise in your imagination, your spirit, far above the common and usual level. In other words, what God said to me, he said, you better tell your friends and your neighbors to take a good look at you now. Take a good look at what you did this year because when the wind of God get beneath your wings, you're going to bypass their expectation. Are you hearing me? You tell them, I'm not allowing you to put my spirit in a box because God is going to destroy the box and he's going to dispel your expectations about my life because the Lord said to me he said there every eagle in the body of Christ is about to soar in their imagination what is God saying right there God said you're going to start dreaming at night and you're going to say God can I do that and by the time you get up in the morning God is going to have you a 
plan and provision to do what you have imagined in your spirit that you can do. He said your spirit is going to just start turning and you're going to start saying, God, can I do it? And you're going to go from, I don't think I can, to you're going to stand up and say, wait a minute. The God I serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. And I believe that I'm about to do what God has created me to do. Goes on to say, so Lord began to talk to me and he showed me. He said, I said, well, God, why aren't we soaring in that level that you've created us to soar? And God began to show me something in my research. I ran upon a little something about an eagle. Out of all that I read about the eagle, I read something about an eagle that just I could see myself in, brother. And it was about, about midlife of an eagle. Something starts happening. Even though he was able to soar high and above and just let the wind catch him and all of this stuff, it says that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he runs into a, uh, the female runs into a chemical imbalance in her body, which is called the molten process. And as I begin to read that, the Lord said, I want you to explain a moment to the body of Christ about the molten process of an eagle and ask them, can they see themselves in that? And in the molten process, it says the eagle began to go through a chemical imbalance. In other words, it says that all of a sudden something started happening that they can't control. It says a soaring eagle will find themselves no longer with the energy to soar. It will find themselves being from above the clouds and soaring to being hidden away in a secluded area in the rocks. It says that they will go from lifting their head up high to holding their head down and looking. And it says that as an eagle is going through this particular process, it feels that why am I in this? How did I get here? I'm not supposed to be here. I'm an eagle. I'm not supposed to be in the valley. I wasn't created to walk in the valley. I was created to soar in the mountains. So how did an eagle get here? And I looked and it began to say, it says that the eagle will sit there with his head down. And it says that its tear ducts become so dried up that there's no water in the tear ducts. Can you see this why God categorized the body of Christ as mounting up with wings as eagles? And it says that the eagle will, be, will sit there with his head down, hidden in the rocks, wondering, how did I go from soaring to sitting in a valley? It says that the longer she sits there, she thinks that the worst thing that has ever happened to her is that she doesn't have the energy to soar. But only to find out that that's not the worst thing. The worst thing that starts happening, it says, the more she sits there, she begins to notice she starts losing feathers. So now, no longer do I not have the energy to fly. I'm losing my ability to fly. Come on, somebody. He said that the more she sits there and starts losing feathers, she begins to lose feathers, sitting and hiding going through her molten process. But then I kept reading, and I read something that just, I begin to wail when I read it. It says that the eagle will sit there in a, in a secluded area, and all of a sudden, as she sits with her head down, all of a sudden, it says she bears up enough strength to hold her head up. Only to her amazement, she hears a sound over her head. And it's a sound of other eagles flying over. They're, they're flying over where she is. And I kept reading. I was so mesmerized. It says the eagles will begin to fly around. And I said, God, why, why are they doing this? And it was like the Lord was speaking to me. I said, because it says, it said in the research book that she is hidden away. But the Lord said the eagles are saying, I miss her in the presence. Are you hearing this? It says they're saying, I miss, I miss her worship on Sunday morning. I miss, I miss her yes to the Lord on my row. And the Lord said that the other eagles have all gotten together and said, have you seen Annie lately? She used to soar with us on Wednesday night. She hasn't been here in two Wednesdays. But it says the eagles continue to fly around. And watch this. This messed me up because eagles are generally birds that, can, that stay to themselves. So this messed me up when it said that they got together. It says that they will begin to swarm around and then they will realize that if she is in hiding and cannot soar and refuse to hunt, she will die if she doesn't eat. 
it says that they will get together and one by one each eagle will go and get a worm and they said she's somewhere down in this valley and said we're gonna keep dropping worms until she eat and we're gonna keep dropping worms until we see her get up are you hearing can you see the picture now and it says that she will go from being discouraged at, in, in her process to, it says that the eagle would just look at the worm and finally get it in her mind because it says the moment she sees them originally she thinks that they came to mock her in her state of discouragement she thinks that they came to make fun of her. You used to be the one that had everything. Now look what you're going through. I can't believe it's you, Miss Popular One. I can't believe it's you, Miss Praise and Worship. Where's your worship now? Oh, you mean some trouble hits your house? Oh, you mean you have problems with your kids too? It says immediately she thinks that they're there to mark her until they start dropping worms. And she goes, they're not here to mark me, but they showed up to help me. And it says that, that she will continue. She will start eating the worms. And it says that all of a sudden, the weight that she lost will begin to come back in her body. It says that the feathers that she lost, it says that all of a sudden, the more she eats, her feathers start coming back. And you know what I read that really messed me up? It said this process lasts for about 40 days. I wish I had somebody right there could understand the power of God. I read that, I began to scream and shout. It said it lasts for about 40 days. And it said that the eagles will continue to feed her, watch this, until she come out of hiding. Oh, I wish, I gotta show you this. It said they will continue to drop worms until she come from behind the rocks. In other words, they will continue to feed her until she stop hiding behind her pain, until she stop hiding behind her discouragement, until she stop hiding about behind who hurt her, until she stop hiding behind what she went through and say, I refuse to allow a 40 day trial to make me die now. I refuse for a test or a trial to make me stop soaring now my god watch this i'm almost finished it says that they will swan they will keep soaring around till she comes out of the rocks and then the and they said they will stay there until they see a weak eagle that used to have the strength to soar mount up her wings and say i know you thought i was dead but i'm back I know you thought I was gonna give up, but I'm still in the race. I know you thought I had lost my mind, but I came back to let you know I have the mind of Christ. I know you thought that when I fell in them, I came back to let you know, don't rejoice when I fall, but I shall arise. It says, when they see her mount up with what God created her to be, then they go on about their business. <laughs> Can you imagine the power of God in that? Now let me show you why this message is prophetic as I take about three more minutes. No, you don't tell a preacher like me to take my time. You don't, I, I have wisdom. I love to preach. You do not tell somebody that's been through hell and back to take your time. You do not tell somebody that the devil tried to destroy your reputation and lied on you and God wouldn't let you say nothing. You don't tell somebody like me, take your time. I'll be here all night trying to tell you what I went through, but I came out shouting. I came out rejoicing. I came out with the joy of the Lord. He's still my strength. I may have had to cry but I'm not a crybaby. I may have been hurt, but I'm not wounded. Come on, somebody. Let me just say this and get out of here. Y'all don't know me. I'm just some little country girl that just got delivered. I'm so glad to be delivered because I was a fool for the devil. I'm so glad to be in my right mind 
Cause some of the stuff I used to do, I'm too embarrassed to tell anybody now. I will never write my real testimony in a book. I'll never tell my real testimony. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me. Why? Because you wouldn't want to hear me anymore. If I ever tell you how messed up my mind was, just believe me that God set me free. My God. But let me show you this. The Lord spoke to me. And he said this. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Lord said to me, let me show you what God showed me. And I'm out of here. We're going to be out by 8. Because I dare not be late. <laughs> Watch this. The Lord said to me, I want to show you. When God spoke to me and said, I want you to tell every eagle, it's time to sow again. He said, I don't care how bad you were hurt. Keep eating the worms that your girlfriend is dropping you. He said, I don't care if your husband ran off and left you. Just keep, just keep eating the worms that somebody is brave enough to stand in the gap for you until your strength come back. See, that's what's wrong with the church. We don't have enough people that are weighed out the wind for somebody else. But we ended the last time a bunch of other eagles got together and said, no, we're going to tell the devil, you will not take our sister down. We'll pray all night if we got to. We'll fast all day for that brother. You will not destroy his life. He may not be able to pray right now, but I'll pray for him. It says, when God spoke to me, he said, this is a prophetic message. Little did I know what God was talking about. Because I'm a country girl, so I don't know much. I have a doctorate degree, but it's in counseling. I used to be a high school teacher, but I taught special needs students. So I, I stayed in my grade. So a lot of stuff I just don't know. So I, everything that I have to preach on, I can't preach on anything that I don't know, so I have to do a lot of reading. And so as I was doing the research for this message, God said, this is a prophetic message. And he said to me, I want you, when you get to Denver, to talk to the eagles and tell the eagles it's time to soar. Now watch this. I said, I can do that, God. And I started my little research. Now watch this. While I was doing research, I came across something on the internet. And it said the National Eagle Repository is located in Denver, Colorado. I'm not going to get much help right there. But let me show you what God said. See, I told you I'm a teacher by trade, but I still didn't know what a repository was. So I had to look up in the dictionary, because I don't want to look, I don't try to look deep, I stay in my grave. I'm not going to stand up here with the Greek word and the Hebrew if I don't know what I'm talking about. And so I looked it up, and it said, a repository is a place of safekeeping. Now that still didn't mean much to me. So I said, I got on the internet. I said, what in the world is this National Eagle Repository in Denver? So I started reading when I found it. And it said, it is the place where all the eagles in the United States, upon their death, they are sent to Denver, Colorado. Oh, I'm going to say that again, because I don't think the eagles in here just heard me. It said that whenever an eagle dies in the United States, there is a place here in Denver, Colorado, that they are sent to and preserved. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. So I said, God, what in the world are you saying? So I kept doing my research and I kept reading. And I came across a word because the Lord spoke to me. And he asked, God, what do you say? He said, daughter, when you get to Denver, it's going to be a sign in the spirit, but I'm going to reveal it in the natural what I'm about to do in the spirit. I said, God, what do you say? He said, when you go to Denver, I want you to prophesy to every dead eagle. I said, God, do I go to Bishop Leonard's church and tell them they're a bunch of dead eagles? He said, no, baby, you're missing it. He said, you don't understand, because he hooked it up all together. Watch this. He said, when you hit the city where they keep the dead eagles, watch this. You're going to prophesy to the eagles. Now, okay, that sounds good. I could do that. I'm anointed to prophesy, you know. But watch God. He interrupted my schedule. I got a phone call after I got this invitation. I got a phone call from Bishop Francis over in London, England. 
And he called me at home personally, didn't even call my office. He said, Dr. Capehart, I need you to come to London immediately. I said, I cannot go to London. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've been on the road for the last two weeks. And I said, the only day that I can go is the day he wants me to go. So I couldn't say I'm busy. Because <laughs> I've been delivered from lying. <laughs> so, watch this. I'm standing there saying I can't go. My husband said, you got to go, baby. He said, I don't know why, but you got to go. Watch this. I said, yes, I'll go. So I kept doing my research because the Lord said, when you get to London, I want you to preach. It's time for the eagles to so. I said, okay, I can do that same message. Let's study. <laughs> Watch God. So I was excited to go to London again. I was excited about coming here. I'm going to preach in Bishop Leonard's church. And the Lord stopped me dead in my tracks. He said, it is not about you going to get a hookup. It's not about people knowing you. He said, it's about the eagles. Now watch this. He said to me, I was doing my study. I came across a word that says, because the Lord said to me, I said, God, how are the eagles going to get up? He said, you're going to do it just like I told Ezekiel. I saw a field. God showed me a field. And he's looking, and there was nothing but dead eagles in the field. And he asked me a question. He said, daughter, can these eagles soar again? after they've been broken, after they've lost some feathers. He said, can they sow again after trouble, after persecution? I said, God, only you know it. He said, but I want you to do like Ezekiel, and I want you to prophesy to the wind. Now watch this. In my research, I ran across this word, and it says ruach. Now that is Hebrew. So I felt good that I was going to be able to say a little Hebrew. So I said that. I said, my God, and God said this to me. He said, he said, I'm going to allow my ruach because in Genesis 1 and 2, where it says that the Lord began to move upon the face of the earth. And in there, that translation in Hebrew means the spirit or the wind of the Lord began to hover over the earth and, and things started happening upon the wind moving. So I said, God, what are you saying? I went to my husband. I said, honey, how to pronounce this word? He said, ruach. I said, okay, sounds good. But little did I know what God was doing. When I got my, my itinerary together to go to London, God said to me, there was no way I was going to allow you to go to London where the dead eagles were. Watch this. And not take the wind to them. When I looked at my itinerary on where I was going in London, the name of Bishop Francis' ministry is Ruat Ministries. Oh, God. I don't think you heard me. God said, what I am doing to show you in the natural is what I'm going to do in the spirit. God said, you've got to go where the wind is first and take the wind where the dead eagles are. Now watch this. He did not stop right there when he showed me that. He said, I'm going to send you to Ruach first. I'm going to send you where the wind is. I'm going to take you where the dead eagles are. Watch this. And he said, when it's all over, you're going to be standing on a firm foundation. I said, God, what is that? You're going to be standing where the heritage is. My God, I wish I had somebody right there can understand how God can take a message and put it together. And God said, every dead eagle is about to stand on the heritage of God that I shall live and not die, but declare the works of the Lord. You might as well start soaring because there's no way you can die now. I tell you to take somebody by the hand and tell them, I don't know what sent you to the field. I don't know what broke your spirit. But tonight it's time to soar again. I don't know who hurt you. I don't know what problem you ran in to cause you to run into a collision. I don't know who came running after you and shot you out of the sky. But tonight I came to speak life to your spirit. I'm telling you tonight that God created you to begin to soar. He wants your spirit to arise. He wants your mind to go where he is. Come on, begin to open your mouth and say that it's time for me to soar. It's time for me to soar. I'm coming out of the valley. I'm coming out of this problem. I'm coming out of this test. I'm getting ready to soar.
let me help you. The Lord said to me, prophesy to the wind. And watch this. God showed me something in my reading. It says that an eagle don't need much to get started. All he need is to feel the wind. He don't need a runway. He don't need a jump start. He don't need to be pumped and primed. At the moment he feels the wind, he's soaring again. Tell somebody, I'm about to speak to the wind. And when I feel the wind, I'm going to be back in the presence of the Almighty Savior. I'm going to be up in the heavens. Deuteronomy 32 says, it's time he made me to ride on my high places that I may increase of up and eat of the increase of the fields. The Lord said tonight that when he get through breathing on your spirit, you're going to begin to ride on every high place of God. Lift your hands in this place. Say, God, breathe on me tonight. Breathe. 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 Until I feel the wind. Breathe. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe. If that's you, and you say, I need to feel the wind, run to the altar. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. If that's you, and I need the Lord to breathe on me, get me out of the valley. Get me out of trouble. Run to the altar. Breathe. Breathe on my situation. Breathe. Until I'm soaring again. Breathe. Until I feel my anointing. Breathe. Until I feel your presence. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Come on. I dare you. Begin to worship like you ain't never worshiped. Few more minutes. Come on. Say so you better look at me now. Cause I'm about to go somewhere I've never been before. I'm, a, uh -huh. I'm about to do something. I've been waiting on God to do. I hear the Lord say, you've been waiting a long time. But tonight, the wait is over. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Those of you that can, just stretch your arms out. Give me some on the strings. Say, God, just let me feel the wind of the Ruach anointing. Flow on me like never before. God, let me begin to ride on every high place. And in Deuteronomy 32, it said he made me ride on my high place that I may eat the increase of the fields. God said to me, if that word said he made me ride it means you are not driving. If you are riding, it means you all you got to do is get in the wind. God's got directions. When you are passenger, you don't need to know where you're going. Just trust God to get you there. Come on, give me something. I want you to take hands of somebody standing by you. Just with one person. Just take hands of one individual. Take them by both hands. That's it. That's it. That's it, brother. Come on. 
say tonight you're getting ready to soar like you have never soared come on I want you to speak in their lives say tonight God created you as an eagle because you've been waiting on him I'm talking to you he said you are about to do something you have never done before come on begin to pray in the spirit we bless your name oh Lord we bless your name oh Lord come on I feel the wind come on can I hear it okay I feel the wind I feel the wind of the spirit breathe on me come on minister to him breathe on me I feel my strength coming back I feel my joy coming back I feel the Lord healing me breathe on me breathe on me come on a few more minutes something is happening breathe on me Jesus don't let me stay where I am breathe on me breathe on that's it, honey. Breathe on me. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Come on, that's it. Pray like you've never prayed for about one more minute. I commend your spirit to get up. That's it. You'll never be the same again. Arise tonight. Arise tonight. Arise tonight. I prophesy to the wind. I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south wind. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. That's it. use you like never before oh god i never thought i could feel such power never thought i could so he's healing me i feel him doing it every chain is broken every chain is broken every chain somewhere watch me as I fly above the storm watch me watch me so in the Lord tonight I love you Lord come on I feel the Holy Ghost tonight I prophesy to every eagle in the body of Christ get up get up you can stay here
If you feel him taking your place, give him a shout. Come on, Eagles. Give him a shout. Shout. You got victory. Shout. You're free. Shout. But just as I release the mic, I would not do this if the Lord did not instruct me. I normally don't do this, but the Lord did instruct me to do this. He said only those that could. So I'm not asking you to do something that you cannot do tonight. He said only those that could sow a $40 seed and say this goes to where I'm about to sow. Only those that can. I heard him say $40. Only those that can. Get it in your hand as quick as possible. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Know that the wind of God has caught your spirit. And you are about to go somewhere in the imagination of the spirit of God. God is going to start showing you visions and dreams of why you were created. As to why he pulled you out. And you could not stay where you were. I hear the Lord saying, some of you are going to need a tape recorder. He's going to speak so much. I'm going to increase you in your business, said God. If you would listen, he said, whatever your assignment is in the body of Christ, do it even greater. Do it even greater. Whatever your position is, never be found lacking in that position. If you are tired, pay, pay more. I hear the Lord said, I'm going to cause your spirit to do even more. Those that can, come lay it on the altar, a $40 seed. If you can do it, lift your hands, young man. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. Oh God, God lift him tonight. Oh, shook and he almost shot like he has never been lifted before. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God's going to amaze you, brother. And what he's going to do for you. God said, Yes, even you. I'm going to cause you to soar, said God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Were you blessed tonight? I want you to look at somebody. I want you to tell them you are an eagle. Look at somebody and look at somebody else and tell them you are an eagle. Now I want you to say, I am an eagle. I want you to say it again, I am an eagle. Say it one more time, I am an eagle. Hallelujah. Now for many of you, your wings have been clipped. They've been broken. But God will put your wings back together. What the enemy meant to destroy you with, God can truly turn it for your good. And I don't want you to miss the opportunity. Those of you that could not sow a seed of $40, you need to sow something towards your healing. You need to sow something towards your victory. You need to sow something to get you back in flight so you can start soaring again with the eagles. Amen? Right where you are, just raise your hands to the Lord. Father, I thank you for your people. Father, I thank you that I, in this room are eagles. The Father, that we can soar in the heavenlies with you. Father, I thank you that you have a plan for everyone in this room. Father, they're no accident. They weren't born by a mistake. Father, you put them on this earth to soar like an eagle. And Father, I thank you that the words that will start to come out of their mouths will be positive. That, Father, that they'll be towards life and no longer towards death. That, Father, that they'll get in the Word. And, Father, that they'll truly believe that they are eagles. Because you did not create them to be defeated. You created them to walk victorious. And so, Father, right now, like never before, I pray that your presence would touch everyone in this room. From the top of their head, truly, to the soles of their feet. May their spirit be changed. And may life come into them like never before. And for those in this room that were dead, Father,